Early on when we were doing our testing, uh, it was mostly in laboratories, and we were really able to characterize engines and see what was going on, and, and the emissions were pretty high. We, we thought we were doing a good job in, in the laboratory, but uh, once the invention of PEMS came out, we were starting to see that there's a different behavior that's happening outside, especially when you get to after treatment systems and some of the more advanced stuff that we're seeing coming out in the last five, 10 years. We have uh, ability with the advanced powertrain cell uh, that AVL uh, provides is to be able to take real-world measurements off of the vehicle, uh, drivability, uh, performance, emissions, uh, fuel economy, and, and dynamics as well. In use testing is used in many different applications. Today we have an on-road application where we'll be testing this light-duty diesel. The device on the right is our, our soot measurement device, and on the left side here we have the gas pens. And this device right here is our system controller that centrally controls the devices and also collects the data. It also collects the vehicle can information and also the ambient conditions. Each environment has different characteristics that affect the vehicle and its emissions. From driving in these mountains, we can see it's not just the ambient conditions, but also the topography of the landscape that will affect our data. Aggressive drivers tend to have more spikes in their emissions. As you aggressively accelerate and brake, you'll see peaks and valleys all throughout the data. On flatter terrain, you tend to see less variation in engine load and emissions generally stay constant. But spikes will be seen during and shortly after acceleration. We've seen 11 degrees change from our canyon shot to here, right next to the ocean, and I'm sure the humidity has gone up as well. So the best part about uh, collecting all this data in use is that we can uh, collect it, record it, and actually replay it back in the test lab so we can do further analysis with it. That has tremendous advantages because the more of the vehicle you can bring into the lab and have real world correlation, understanding that correlation of course is what's key to having it be effective for both data collection and then utilization and creating new product. You need to think about the, uh, the FTP and what the purpose of that cycle is. Uh, it's really a cycle that was designed to help the engineer look at how to calibrate an engine around transient behavior and behaviors that are common that we find in the field, you know, cruise applications, uh, acceleration applications and things like that. So we can get the emissions and control them. But what happens in the field is very different. And so the, the laboratory setting is not going to go away because it's still the tool that we use to figure out where we've been and where we're going. And the field is what we use to see, did we get it right? It's critical to establish correlation between the real world and the laboratory and vice versa. We have to be able to establish that what we run in the lab, if that's where it starts out, translates to the road. That's key, and that's why doing both is very important to collect real world data and use that to help increase the fidelity of the simulation models is, of course, always going to be a way of further and further refining that. One of the things you can't take uh, a bulldozer and put it on a chassis dyno and expect to get the same numbers that you would in the field. You need to have that bulldozer pushing trash or pushing earth or rock in its application and measure what it's doing there and you'll find you get the benefit, or you might find some other application where the emissions didn't go down, something went up, but you can help the industry figure that out or come up with a, a plan to improve it. One of the aspects for PEMS in, in the state and in our country is, is air quality and, and, and human health. And the way we approach that problem is the state manages it by an inventory. And there's some communities that in our state are in excess of what the federal standards are. So as we get into deep traffic and really get to a stop and go situation, I think we're going to start to see constituents like CO2 just uh, really go up and down, up and down, just really following what our throttle input is. One of the other great aspects of PEMS is their ability to, to help us answer really tough questions in the field. And, uh, 
Um, with recent regulations dropping emissions to another 90% lower, uh, after treatment systems came on for heavy duty vehicles, uh, both for PM and NOx. And what's really interesting about that is we dropped to 90% in the engine dyno on a laboratory scale. But when we go in the field, it's, it's not happening like that. We're actually seeing it 10 times higher. And it's happening where our communities are. Um, so this is a big concern for California. And we knew that it would be a problem, but we didn't know how big it would be. Uh, but now we've quantified it, and now we know uh, it's definitely worth time taking to solve that problem. And there's, there's ways to do it. You know, it takes more effort, but you know, that's, that's working together between agencies, academia, and the manufacturers.